time, position, velocity. In these set of videos, we are going to understand the relation between time, position and velocity. In first set of videos, I will take examples where we will have kind of a story related with the graph. And then we will have table of values and a graph. And then finally, we'll have some word problems and equations to solve it algebraically. So we'll go through a sequence in small steps, learning concepts one by one. Now, in this first set, where we're talking about graph and story, rather linking the story with the graph, I'll tell you one story. You can always write your own and figure out something extra from the given graph. Okay, now, so <clears throat> let's start with the very first one. It says, walking to the school at a steady pace. Steady means at a constant speed, right? So that is what we're trying to see here in a graph. Well, let's see from the graph, does it really show a story walking to the school at a steady pace? Now, in this graph, we have x-axis where we have written t for time in minutes. And on the y-axis, we have written d for distance in meters. And I'm trying to give you a story which says distance versus time for Tom. And I'm assuming that Tom is starting from his home and going straight to the school. So let A be the starting point, home, for Tom, and let B be the point at a school. And then we'll also consider what this C is. Okay, so we'll figure out what this C is later. Okay, <clears throat> so in our story, Tom starts from position A, which is the home, and reaches school, which is at point B. In doing so, how much distance does Tom cover? Well, the distance covered is along the y-axis, and we see, well, the distance is 600 meters. That means distance of school from home is 600 meters. So we can write distance is equal to 600 meters. So we can straight away read distance from the graph between two points. So if we have a distance versus time graph, we can read distance straight from the graph. Well, we can also read the time. After how many minutes did Tom reach the school? So, well, Tom started at zero minutes. Let's say zero is our starting point. So it reached 4, 8, 12, 16, and this corresponds to 20 minutes. So time taken to reach the school was 20 minutes, right? So that is how we can read distance and time from a distance time graph. Do you see how straightforward it is? Actually speaking, every point on this graph gives the position of a person. So at B, the position is 20 minutes, 600 meters. So position is always given with the horizontal value and the vertical value. So by default, the horizontal is x-axis and vertical is y-axis. For distance versus time, time is the independent variable which we put along the x-axis. And distance is the dependent variable which we are putting along the y-axis, right? And therefore, we are calling this as a distance versus time graph. So now you've understood one thing, that in a distance versus time graph, we can straight away read position with the help of time and distance. So at B, the position is 20, 600. So at B, the position is 20, 600. We can write like this. 20 is the x value, which we go like from here to here. That is 20. And that's the time. So time taken for Tom to reach school was 20 minutes. And in these 20 minutes, how much distance did he cover? He covered a distance of 600 meters. So that is the dependent variable value. It comes later. 
So position B can be defined by the coordinate 20, 600 within parenthesis. Right? Origin is always 0, 0, right? So that is the position of school in this coordinate plane. So the location of school is 20, 600. Okay? So that's the location of the school. It is an additional information which you can straight away read from a distance versus time graph. Okay? But what you can find from here, that is very interesting. You see this line joining A and B is a straight line. So, if you find the slope of this line, which is change in distance, that means this height or rise, right? over change in time. We get the slope of line AB and this slope is speed. Right? You know a distance speed triangle? Let me draw it here for you. So in a distance speed triangle, distance is speed into time. Or we can also write average speed, speed equals to distance over time. Distance over time, right? Strictly speaking, we can find speed between any two locations or positions, right? In that case, we will check change in distance divided by change in time. Well, in this first few videos, I will use distance over time equals to speed as a basic relation. And then we will really develop on this concept and then understand what is change in distance and what is change in time. Okay? Now here, distance covered is 600 meters. So we can write speed is distance of 600 meters divided by 20 minutes. The time taken to cover this distance is 20 minutes, right? So if we divide 600 by 20, what do we get? 60 divided by 2 is 30. So we get 30 meters per minute. So that is the speed, steady speed at which Tom goes from home to school, right? So that is how we can calculate speed from the given graph, right? Now, let's consider this point C. It indicates a position where the time is 32. So we'll write time 32 and the distance is 600. Now you see, distance has not changed. So from B to C, distance remains 600. That means Tom was stationary. Tom was in the school. Do you understand? So there is no change in distance and we get a horizontal line. And the slope here, that is the speed, will be change in distance over change in time. So you understand now how we can getting into the concept of change in distance, right? So, so distance, what well, change here is also 600, since 600 minus 0 is 600, and change in time is 20 minus 0, right? So it is 20. Now, so a slanting line gives you a positive speed when it is going upwards, right? That's what we saw, 30 meters per minute. Here we have a horizontal line. So from B to C, Distance did not change, but the time changed. That means Tom is at the school all along this time. And the speed here will be zero, right? 600 minus 600, no change in position gives you zero. So speed for a horizontal line is going to be zero for us. Okay, so, so that is how we can read some of the parameters from our graph. In the next example, we'll learn more about similar graph. I hope you understand the concept.